Greetings to you. Uh, my name is Reverend Nathan Chiaga and I am the school chaplain at St. Cuthbert Main School, uh, Area Dean for Tobe and also the independent, independent chair for Devon and Como Community Scrutiny Panel. For our little message, we start from a reading read by one of our students, Stevie Matthews. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran out on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Thank you, Stevie, for reading so well, and thank you for listening uh, wherever you're joining in from. One of the striking things about uh, this story that is familiar to many, and perhaps a reminder to some, is that there is a lot going on in this story. The disciples have just returned from a short-term mission. I have been on a few short-term missions in South Africa and in Poland. And when you return to the people who send you your beach missions in uh, Pembrokeshire, Haverford West, and uh, when you return to your sending community, to the person who sent you, there is a sense of excitement that even the struggle, even the rejection in some parts, all this acceptance was a blessing. And so... From this short-term mission, the disciples have returned to Jesus and they are buzzing to share the goodness of the Lord. In South Africa, where I was at Lily of the Valley, there were these young people who, a number of them, were on strong medication because of their health condition. And they did not stop beaming with smiles. Over 500 students in this complex where we stayed together in dormitories and we prayed together in the evenings. I had a small keyboard. We played music and worshipped the Lord. They had this sense of God's presence that was so powerful. At 6 p.m. in the evening, we used to play music and pray. And then at 6, they would stop to take their medication and then join in. They had this sense of belief, both in the medicine and also the power of God to heal them. And transformed my understanding of God and his healing power and how he does things. I came back to my sending space, which was Redcliffe College at the time, and shared with exuberance. And so what we're seeing here in the Bible story is disciples returning so excited to offload their joy before the Lord. Of course, when they come, they find Jesus already managing crowds, already doing his business, and actually inviting them to say that when he sent them off, he didn't sit still, he kept doing his father's business, even in their absence. He reminds us in here that mission and what we do is his mission. Miss your day, the mission of God. So whatever the disciples were doing, multiplied by 12 plus, was actually the work of God, his mission to which we participate. And at this point, his response to them is, come with me. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Notice that there is mission going on. There is a lot of movement back and forth to Jesus. But what he says to them is, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. In the space of illnesses, in the space of struggles, in the space of healing, in the space of miracles, in the space of so much going on, Jesus takes his gaze and puts it on the disciples and says, come with me and have some rest. We are coming out of this lockdown and as the easing goes on, we may want to be more and do more moving from online to gathered spaces or the blended, whatever that might be. May you hear that still voice of God that says, come away by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. 
Ministry is much easier when we are operating from a place of rest and richness and fruitfulness. Thank you for the hours you've put in, whether it's been in the hospitals, whether it is in the schools, whether it is in the churches, whether it's in the whichever supermarkets. Well done. You have done a really remarkable job to keep the nation fed, looked after, and everyone still going. And of course, there's been some tragedy. Where there's been tragedy, I share in your pain and I say so sorry. I feel for your pain and I pray that God's peace and comfort will be where you are right now. That you will experience the depth and height of his love right where you are. Where there's been frantic movement back and forth. I pray that in your service you will find time to rest. This is not just for the priests or the ordained people in our midst. But this is for all of us. Lay workers, you are one of the biggest assets to the diocese. And your work is vital as you become truly authentic to your places of work as missionary disciples. The layman is anything but some sort of marginal figure on the outskirts of the church. He is the essential interpreter of the Christian message in the battlefield of the world. Therefore, he must be spiritually prepared for open confession of his faith and to active service in everyday life as well as the congregation. And many of you, the laity, have been outstanding in enabling services to happen. Many of you have been outstanding in ensuring that giving continues for the work of the church, which is financially, we need that support as a diocese. Many of you have joined in with your hands to see the difference happen, whether it's in the vaccination, food banks, and all other places. And perhaps God is saying, all oh, that good you've been involved with, now it's time to come away with me by yourself to rest and have something to eat. He will feed you spiritually. He will feed you emotionally. He will feed you in every way possible. And so, are you tired and weary? Maybe God is calling you to live for a quiet space. Are you physically exhausted? Maybe you need some sleep. Are you psychologically exhausted by the racism and the prejudice and everything else around that is causing us to live in disharmony with one another? Maybe it is an opportunity for you to go and rest for a while with God. In whichever season you find yourself in, whether you are on a high or feeling low or in the in-between, the invitation still is the same. Come and rest for a while. And so as you rearrange your diaries, the laity, may you be reminded, you are the mouthpiece of the church in this confused world. You are the mouthpiece in those spaces and margins. And be encouraged, all the disciples were part of the lay community and they made a difference. He sent them out. God will commission you again in your workspace to be the difference he wants you to be there. Whichever office you hold, whichever space you inhabit, may you be the fragrance of Christ from a place of rest. And for any of us who may struggle to let things down, hoping that they will fall down, one reminder in the story is that Jesus sends them away and still the work continues. I dare perhaps suggest that all our work, all the things we do, are short-term mission in the internal perspective. God has the long-term perspective of what we are doing and he is in that field if he himself in the story goes away to pray on a mountain then surely us his followers are perhaps should and must take time to rest remember exhaustion can blur our attention to the mystery and the work of god in our midst just like the disciples, they did not lack faith in seeing the 5,000 fed. No, they had seen miracles happen. They had a lot of faith. But I would maybe argue that exhaustion and tiredness blood their vision in this story. Have a think about that. And as you do, book in the next holiday. Ask your manager, ask your line manager for a space to rest and Make an, it an intention to go and rest for a while. Be replenished so that you can work.
from a place of rest. May God bless you and keep you. And from us, we say amen and amen to that rest you're going to have.